Are you a racist but afraid of getting cancelled? Do you want to oppress minorities but the evil government won't let you? Then Blade Runner is the perfect movie for you! Instead of saying the n-word to dehumanize black people, you can dehumanize robots by calling them skin jobs, or as I like to call it, the s-word. All jokes aside, Blade Runner 2049 does an excellent job at using language for its world building. From advertisements being written in Japanese to the way humans and robots speak with each other, Blade Runner perfectly uses language to deliver the message of the movie. So without further ado, here's how Blade Runner 2049 uses language to convey meaning. Blade Runner is set in a dystopian future where technology has advanced at such a rapid rate that robots have become nearly indistinguishable from humans. The extreme technological advancements have made all of the money end up in the hands of a small rich elite, completely unlike anything from the real world. Unlike the dystopia we're living in, however, their version of racism seems to be a bit different from ours. Instead of hating people due to the color of their skin, these people hate robots. They're taking our jobs, they're taking our money, and they're becoming our wives. Robots truly are the minority that everyone can punch down on. After all, they're not humans, right? Well, they sure seem to act human. They look the same, they talk the same, and they think the same. The fact that the robots are nearly identical to humans scares the humans to death. So what do we do when what we previously thought was right might be wrong? That's right, we double down on being wrong and pretend that we're right anyways. Since humans and robots are nearly indistinguishable by nature, humans decided to distinguish them socially. Here's a step-by-step -step program for how to oppress minor- I mean robots. Step 1. Give the robots jobs that no one else wants to do, such as being executioners or sex workers. Step 2. Racially discriminate the robots as much as possible. Invent brand new words like skin job to remind the robots of their second class citizens. Step 3. Introduce the replicant prohibition laws, which regulates how robots and humans talk to each other. Don't forget to be nice to the humans, or the Blade Runners will come and pay you a visit. Step 4. Give the robots fake human memories to blur the line between what's real and what's fake. Use the psychological manipulation to ensure obedience so that they can subjugate them even further. And that's that! You've successfully managed to create a system where robots are being oppressed by humans despite being nearly identical to each other. We can see how all of these things apply by following our beloved Agent K. His name alone is a reminder of how oppressed robots are. There's absolutely nothing unique about his name, which only goes to show how exchangeable and ordinary he is. When K starts to call himself Joe later on in the movie, it's an act of rebellion. The name comes from the popular expression the average Joe, which means an ordinary person, but paradoxically, by choosing his own unique name as being Joe, he chooses to be someone, to be human. Joe and all of the other robots also speak in a very formal way. Their precise and formal language stands in stark contrast to the informal slang used by humans in the cities, showing us how language reinforces the social line between humans and robots. Finally, humans also use commanding language when they talk with their robot counterparts. Yoshi commands Agent K to follow her commands, just as Wallace commands love. This is also a result of the fact that robots are the workers in society that does the dirty work, which naturally puts them in places of subordination. Another difference between the humans and robots is the language they speak. As we established before, Blade Runner 2049 is a future dystopia where rapid technological advancements have led to completely unregulated capitalism. Since capitalism seeks to maximize profits, it requires free trade and the mobility of workers and capital. This inherently leads to globalization and multiculturalism, since people and capital move to where profits can be made. The city of Los Angeles and Blade Runner is a giant mix of cultures and ethnicities. People can be seen speaking Spanish, Arabic, and every other language you can think of. The ads are Russian, the machines speak Japanese, and the buildings are written in English. The world of Blade Runner is incredibly diverse and multi-ethnic, which doesn't only just show how ruthless capitalism is in this world, but also how incredibly lonely the people are. There isn't a shared language, there isn't a shared culture, and there's no shared understanding with the strangers on the streets. The only thing you have in common with this stranger is that you happen to be at the same place at the same time. Here's where the robots have the clear advantage. Human beings are limited by our brains. Learning Arabic as an English native takes over 2000 hours, and that's only one of the multiple languages that's being spoken in the city. Robots aren't limited by their brains though. They can simply download the Arabic language pack and boom, you now know how to speak an entirely new language. Being able to speak multiple languages in a multilingual society is extremely practical, which makes the robot's multilingualism highly valuable. 
Unfortunately, the fact that the robots can speak so many languages adds yet another factor that distinguishes them from normal human beings. The robot's ability to learn new languages so easily implies a power imbalance which scares the humans. If the robots are the same as us but outperform us in every other way, then what's the need for humans at all? Once again, humanity doubles down on its robot racism to ignore the fact that robots and humans really are the same. Speaking of language, I'm sure that you didn't miss the insane amount of ads present throughout the entire movie. The big and colorful ads completely saturate the urban landscape, which only shows us how important consumption is to their system. The extreme technological advancements coupled with completely unregulated capitalism has led to literally every aspect of your life being monetized. Did you think that people donating money to VTubers on Twitch was sad? In this world, you can have your own personal girlfriend hologram. That's right, you can literally have your own hololive girlfriend. Except, well, it's not real. It's a product you bought to distract you from how lonely you are. Blade Runner has effectively created a system where everyone is desperately lonely due to rampant capitalism and tries to sell you yet another product to fix your sadness. The ads reinforce the notion that human experiences and human emotions can simply be commodified and replaced, further showing how dehumanizing their materialistic system is. There's also a subtle threat behind all of the ads. You wouldn't be wrong to be afraid of these giant ads plastered on top of grey and empty buildings. The ads are meant to scare you. There's a large focus on the eyes in the ads. The image of the eyes creates a sense of constant observation, that you're constantly being tracked and followed everywhere you go. The constant observation shows us the complete lack of privacy in their society, and how hard it is to be recognized as an individual in a society that reduces you to being a mere object instead of a human being. It also shows us just how powerful these companies are. The ever-present corporate logo symbolizes their immense power, reminding us that they have complete control over the economy, the culture, and the lives of individuals. These are corporations that had police officers killed at their will, and constantly tracked Agent K, no matter what he tried to hide. As we can see, the language in Blade Runner does an excellent job at portraying just how broken their system is. From the robot n-word to their most lingual society, the language adds to the movie's critique of materialism, rapid technological advancements, and unrestricted capitalism. By truly understanding the message and nuances of the movie, we can use the movie as a warning against the potential future that we're all heading towards in the real world.